video for teachers using the energy grid calculator in their class and before you ask students to make a copy of this uh, spreadsheet this calculator you are going to need to make a copy yourself and then share that with students um, so for example this could be um, the like my my name teacher um, city uh, current energy grid calculator um, the purpose of this copy is to customize your version of the calculator for your local region, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Um, so notice these plant quantities, um, these maximum production values, the carbon emitted per person per year, those are all coming from um, estimates of actual values of where your electricity is coming from in your city. And again, we, we don't we know that there's not actually any such thing as a local energy grid. Um, we know that states are connected to each other and um, electricity comes from all over the place, but we want to give students a way to think about where their electricity is coming from in a, in a smaller scale, more ta tangible way. Um, so that's what this is doing. First thing you want to do is identify the region that you will be developing for, for example, a city or even a county or a state. So you will need to research the population and the area of your region in acres. And then you'll change these three values um, to reflect the name, the, the, the population, and the area. Make sure that this area is in acres. Um, uh, rather than hectares or, or meters squared. The next thing that you'll need to do is to select your state from this drop-down menu, uh, and this is going to affect all sorts of things. So if I change this state, the population changes, the state summer capacity changes, the net generation changes, and this ratio of average demand to maximum demand changes as well. Um, this is all pulling from uh, this state data table, um, and it's possible that these numbers will be outdated when you're using the calculator, so you may want to change some things in a more customized way, but this will at least get you started. Um, you can then look through your state's energy profile, um, and if you notice anything that is especially uh, outdated or that you know is wrong, um, you can change it here. So for example, in Colorado, the uh, we are moving away from coal rather rapidly. And um, the number of coal plants, the percentage of uh, coal usage was higher than 12.5 um, on the data that I pulled. So I reduced the percentage to what it is currently um, and I reduced the number of plants to something that is scaled to the population of Denver. If you don't want to worry about that, you can ignore it completely. In fact, all of these steps, steps one, two, three, and so on, become less and less important as you go onwards. So step four <clears throat> is a way to customize how um, effective various sources are going to be in your region, um, and we've given you a few sources to allow you to do that. So for example, this is probably the most important one. Solar irradiance is based on this map here, and we can tell from this map that the sun is stronger in Arizona and New Mexico than in Maine, and therefore students in New Mexico will find that adding solar panels is more cost effective than adding solar panels in Maine. You can use this map to come up with a single number from this table here um, that reflects your local region, and then use that number to um, change your value for the solar irradiance. Similarly with wind speed, um, there is a map here that gives us approximate wind values it's, it seemed important to us to give two different values, a, a value that was lower wind and a value that was higher wind, so students need to wrestle with the choice of where to place those wind turbines. So, for example, we have a 
inside the city value of 4 meters per second and then outside the city value of 7.5 meters per second. Both those numbers came from that map. Um, another thing that calculator is using is uh, distances because we want students to wrestle with the cl closer we put our energy sources, the less energy we lose to uh, the surroundings through those wires. So um, you can put in values, even very, very approximate values for that higher wind, farther distance, and especially the offshore wind distance. Um, if this value is greater than, uh, say, 800 or 1,000 miles, students will find that it is not a useful source because there's so much energy lost over that distance that it's not a viable solution. Um, other values you may want to play around with, um, hydropower and geothermal are both very site-specific, um, and there may be some areas near you that um, are potential uh, areas to install um, a hydroelectric dam or a geothermal plant. Uh, we've given you some links to help you do that. So for hydro, uh, for, for geothermal, the link is here. And for hydro sites, we've um, put in a table of data that's organized by state. So for example, in Colorado, um, near Denver, there is a, a dam that or a reservoir that students will recognize called Chatfield that is currently not electrified, but they could propose hypothetically electrifying um, that dam. So a few more details, um, but like I said, if this is starting to lose you, you can focus on steps one, two, and three, and you'll be absolutely fine. All this section, all, all this green and gray and uh, blue sections down below are numbers that you shouldn't have to change at all. They are coming from peer-reviewed sources um, or government sources and giving you values that the energy grid calculator then uses to let students do their thinking. Um, if you're curious, you can look through these sources or even students can look through these sources, but they can get pretty complex pretty quickly. So as an extension, you can encourage students to research um, where these numbers are coming from. So notice one last thing, how the, how the grid calculator is laid out. Um, solution two actually shows values that are being used. Some of these values are calculated so that there's some, uh, there's some spreadsheet calculations going on up here. Um, but the first tab tries to um, make those values uh, harder to see so that students don't feel overwhelmed by seeing too many numbers at once. Uh, last thing, if you do have questions or concerns um, or anything that you'd encourage us to update, there will be an email address here to contact. Um, we left, we've left it blank because that contact information might change, but if you'd like to reach out, you can use this email.